So I want to show you how to create symbols. Actually not really create symbols. What I'd like to do is basically within all our solutions and the whole platform, whether it's the electrical engineering, the controls cabinet, the pro panel, uh, co-engineer, pre-planning, it's always the same thing, creating symbols. I'm gonna do it actually here in pro panel and I'm gonna come up with basically a symbol I have to or I want to generate so you can always combine different symbols here's an example I'm gonna go on this object here you can see we have two symbols here what I'm gonna create is basically a uh, fuse holder that has eventually two fuses but not that far apart because when I look into ePlan I may like the uh, fuses and I'm going to drill down and show you what kind of symbols we have so far. We have this symbol here as a double pole fuse. It suits very well this size, but what I would like to do is eventually get it into a uh, smaller space. So what I'm thinking about is eventually making it fit in something like this, you know, half the size. So of course here I can stagger but what I want to do is I want to find a way to create a fuse right there that would fit right there this one I cannot change because if I do change it elsewhere where it's being used it not it will not be uh, suitable anymore and uh, changing a symbol file from ePlan is not recommended because it always has eight different variants for each variant we have specific display arrangements and I don't want that I have something special in the special library so if you drill down here in the special library you can find two connection three connection and even four connection symbols ready to actually go and ready to be used so here I can actually um, uh, put the symbol here and you can see that it creates right away a symbol in the middle here and this symbol of course has a device tag I'll just call it DT okay I'll put a connection designation here of one two three and four I'm gonna check it out so maybe this is not exactly the rotation I would like I have the possibility here to just rotate it to rotation number uh, to the F rotation which is typically the one I use and there I have now my um, one two three four uh, pins similar to what I have here on this symbol. Now uh, I can work on the graphics. So the graphics, maybe uh, you want to drill down your uh, regular grid here and in my case I modified my grid slightly I made it 0 0.5 millimeters. So this enables me to just draw a, the exact symbol. I can always look at what they've done in the past and just you know draw it here okay this is what I want to do I want to put in a rectangle the rectangle is not going to be too big I'm going to use the size that I see here on the right hand side uh, so I'm not going to be really that much bigger like that and of course some of you will say can I copy and paste you can copy and paste you can do uh, the, the, the positioning that you want you can see the center position um, here if you highlight the invisible elements you can see the connections if you don't highlight the invisible elements you can see this you can resize it of course you can actually match it exactly the size you want uh, and at the end of the day what you might actually want to do is you might want to take the existing layers that have been used in the past to represent symbols so here if I use the ePlan 300 symbol graphic general I will end up having the same colors and the same uh, line size and everything than all the rest of the uh, elements. Um, additionally, in ePlan, we have the possibility to take objects like these all together and to group them. Once they are grouped, you can always individually get to one of the items by just clicking on the item itself. And here in this case, uh, let's say you you have a component that you make a little bit bigger hit the shift key and then you can um, make it bigger individually 
You can also go here under Option, Consider Grouping. When this is unchecked, each element is again on its own, right? So you can remove or realign it or change the length or whatever. Uh, when you turn that back on, the Consider Grouping, well then it works again like one single object. Now I'm going to spend a little bit of time in checking out how the display is done. In this case here, the display has been split in two sections. One um, for the technical characteristics, one for the device tag. I'm going to do here the same thing, 0, 4, above, lower, center. So which means I'm going to go in here under the display and the display, I just eliminate what's there and I start from scratch. So the first thing I want to show is the displayed DT and I will position it, same as the other one, at 0 and 4 inches and the um, stacking or docking as we call it will be above. So we stack other properties that are docked to it above this one and it will be of course lower center which makes most sense. There we go. That's the first one. Then we will add the technical characteristics. The technical characteristics um, has a different position. That one here, this one, I will place it with the upper center as a center point. The other one here to start with will be below. We'll have a position uh, that is uh, centered around the lower center. It's going to be zero in terms of the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, I'm just going to make it minus four with, of course, an upper center alignment. So I'm going to add now to the device tag the function text. Function text can be the function text automatic or the regular function text. And if you just reposition it, it will be docked to the device tag. This one here typically has the engraving text attached to it. Uh, has eventually some uh, uh, cross references attached to it, etc. It's up to you to decide what exactly you want to attach to the technical characteristics. You can always close this very quickly and compare to an existing symbol and say, oh, we have the mounting side and graving text supplementary field, etc., and add those ones. An interesting one to remember is to always consider adding the block property. It's a very special one. I'm not going to detail out what that one does, but it's good to have it there also because special uh, features are actually used here with the block property. Once this is done, you can save it as the variant F, variant F like this, and this, if you use it as default, is actually quite useful because the next time around, if you again use that special symbol, if you start filling out the data, here you can fill out the data and say, okay, my technical characteristics 12 amps, and you can even go as far as defining the function. So here it was just an electrical general component, but I can be more precise and say this is a safety fuse, double safety fuse, double safety fuse, exactly the same as this object here, and now suddenly it becomes a double safety fuse and it reacts exactly the same way. And finally, to make this a symbol that you can always uh, look at, you just select the objects we were talking about and using the uh, edit menu, you can create the windows here, the symbol macro. And here we go, we just create that symbol macro. The name of the symbol macro, symbol macro name dot EMS, and you have a symbol macro created. You could, of course, take, take this element, rotate it, and have different variants created. You can even go as far as a regular macro, even attach a part number if you wanted to. If you make it a main function, you can actually attach a part number. Uh, the device selection here will, of course, be as smart as if it would be a regular um, component, regular symbol. So there's no need to really create any symbols in ePlan. You would more likely create a symbol macro and later down the road, and it doesn't matter what system you're using, pro panel or something else, you can create symbol macros and share them simply like this. So here the symbol macro will appear. We call it symbol uh, macro name, right? And it will appear here and it will be usable exactly the way that you had it before. As you can see here, it comes and it is not relevant to any 
synchronization and is not made uh, complicated nothing it's very very easy here of course I have the revision markers on top that actually mark it up and there we go so this was how we create a symbol in ePlan and of course this would connect the way that regular symbols do so if I take this device tag put it in here take these ones just move them up as I expect there you have your connection and your new symbol